So I'll just get started and I'll get the whole thing down in about 30 seconds. The whole image that's in my head, I'll get the, the uh, kind of set down there within about oh, 30 seconds or a minute. And I'll show you how I do that. Just the lightest little sketch. Did you see already I'm working with directional stroking? Mm -hmm. I'm going around in a, in a radi radiance of stroking lines. And this will be the radiance off the moon, because we're going to do the full moon here. But it's just pretty primitive and quick and loose just to get an image down there to work off of. And then we'll have so I'll just sort of you know, some kind of a, you know, the land with maybe some a body of water or something maybe down here to reflect the moon. So I have to, you know, remember that I'm going to have the moon reflecting in a, some water. I'm kind of making this up as I go along here. I have a tree or something over here. But I'm using what's called gesture uh, drawing to kind of build up masses of form in this with a scribbly technique. And what happens when I uh, demonstrate in class, or just like we're doing now, <laughs> is uh, I have to use the left side of my brain to explain this to you guys. <laughs> but I have to click into right brain dominance to do the drawing. So what I'll find is when I'm demonstrating to my students is I'll be talking away, and then I'll start demonstrating and all of a sudden it's really quiet because I have stopped talking because my verbal analytical side that has that ha you have to use to teach has just gone gotten usurped by the right side of my brain who is doing the drawing <laughs> but now I'm doing both at once so we're practicing brain gymnastics here <laughs> But see, now we've got just the basic thing laid in, a minute or so. And I'm also kind of, you know, working with dark and light already because the whole thing in a drawing is just how you add the dark. You've got to get the white paper, you've got the light, and we just start building the darks gradually, and we get the, dra the drama in these pictures is all in the dark and light. You won't get a radiance to the moon if you don't surround it by darkness. So then I go around again, and I'll just keep building up the gradually growing the darks. And this drawing is probably going to take me four or five hours, so I won't make you all just um, watch the, the television or wherever you're seeing this on your computer or for five hours. That would get tedious. So we're going to uh, shoot several shots of this drawing as it proceeds. But whether I'm working a small or big, I always block in the hole first, quickly. And if I'm doing a painting, at that time you'll be blocking in your, not only your darks and lights, which is called value in art, you've got to be thinking about your color relationships and the dark and light and the, uh, you know, how you're going to set the, just the choices of color harmony will get sort of established in that first wave and uh, how you set the cool colors against the warm colors, and of course the dark and light structure, which is 
the the basis and the bones and the skeleton upon which you you hang your 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 paintings so it's very important now i find that black and white work is very fulfilling as an end in itself i've always loved you know etchings and drawings and black and white photography and sumi ink paintings i just love black and white work so that's why i got stuck here one of the places i have gotten stuck in this lifetime is in these tiny little drawings. And one of the reasons I do tiny drawings is that I'm a busy person. I run Icon Gallery and I teach art and, I, and uh, various other things, run and have a radio show, and um, I only have so much time. So I can get fulfillment completing a drawing in four or five hours that is a complete work of art. Now, I'll show you right over here. What, um, the interesting thing about this pencil is that even though it's the tiniest little lead you can imagine, I'm still aware of it having some thickness. And so if I'm trying to do a smooth sky, for instance, I'll flatten it like that. And now I have a chisel kind of edge on there so I can do gradations and smooth fields like that. Mm -hmm. But if I was doing something else, like detail work, or a different kind of a drawing, say of a, of a uh, where I wanted to use line, this is all tonality, but if I was gonna be using line, I would spin this thing and give it a really sharp point. Then I can do the finest line work with this pencil. Now I'm showing you how to make an even field of tone and how I get this smooth in the end. So we don't want that directional stroking. We want to be nice and smooth. For the sky, we might leave a little bit of this radiant directional stroking to give a sense of radiance off the moon. But with this technique, we don't go in like this and smooth it out because I like the bit of a grainy look to the whole thing by not doing that. So we just build up the tones with the pencil. And then I have to go in there and I, like a retouch artist would do, I touch with the lead the light lines that you see that mm -hmm. are creating the directional, the directional stroking is creating kind of linear elements here, lines. Now if it was down in the water, I'm going this way, I'll leave some of that to give the sense of water. Or any kind of horizontal stroking will evoke water. But if I want it to be nice and smooth, then I got to go in and where it's light, I touch, just touch it. I can't go over like that because it'll amplify the dark on each side and it won't accomplish my goal of getting rid of those light lines. So I have to go in and just touch the light line with the pencil tip. Mm -hmm. And then I take my kneaded eraser, and the nice thing about the, well, the thing about these erasers is that you can draw it with them. You could like take out very precise, remove in a very precise way. You can give this a little tip so that you could do some fine erasing. So we love these for uh, making the erasing and removal process as you know delicate and precise as the addition that we do with the, the graphite. Now you can see we can actually remove like that if we wanted to. Um, but what I do is I'm building up the tones, I'm filling in the lighter lines with uh, the pencil, but if there's a dark, 
that I want to get rid of. I'll make a little point with the eraser and I'll touch this. So you can see that this could be a slow process. It goes, you know, faster than you might think, imagining doing all of this. But that's why working small, we can do something very refined with a lot of attention, a lot of, of work that doesn't take too much time. Imagine, you know, just doing a drawing that's as big as this piece of paper in this technique could take a hundred hours. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, this is very classical work, as opposed to what Bob does, which is romantic. It's like a voyage of discovery every mm-hmm. time he sets out, and then he contemplates and makes a move. And I kind of know where I'm headed from the beginning, and I just go there. And it's pretty tight. You know, I, as a student, I was had a lot of skill in drawing. I wasn't a, I was a classical kind of tight artist. So I had to learn how to loosen up and be free and get expression in my work. And this, you know, I've, so I've done, you know, abstract expressionism and all of that, but this is really quite classical in its approach. I mean, this is, um, very refined, or kind of a, realistic image. So it's just a matter of execution. And, you know, you never know where it's going to wind up. You just get to a point where, oh, that's nice. You know, maybe, see, I've got a lot of light in the sky here, mm-hmm. which is, you know, really common. Like on the full moon night we had last night, the sky can get quite, you know, light. But sometimes I'll make it quite dark and just have a little glowing moon with mm-hmm. a little bit of halo around it. And I never quite know where these are headed. I'll just start taking it darker. And before I know it, I've got that look, the, you know, the bright moon and a dark sky with a little bit of a halo around it. This is really quite a lot of light, mm-hmm. which I'm liking quite a bit. So I'm trying to hold that. It's even uh, around the tree and the the ground light around it, which is quite nice, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then the depth of the water and horizon line. Yeah, and I have to work on the water some more. It's It doesn't feel that finished to me yet. See, because where most people would think, oh, my drawing's done, that's kind of where I start. I mean, I do it where it's a nice drawing. But it's this continuing on and doing this kind of subtle stuff where you it's just the slightest, slightest changes. I mean, the slightest little changes and touching it a bit that, that gives you that refined subtlety. Uh, you know, I don't compare myself to Da Vinci, who I think was the great master, but that's what's the difference between his paintings and the rest of those Renaissance masters. I mean, you know, in the high Renaissance, we had Raphael and Titian and, and uh, Da Vinci and Michelangelo and, and the greatest of all time was some really great moment in art history. But so you compare those to the other... You go in the museum and you see the Renaissance paintings appeared and then you see one by one of those masters and it just like... It's alive. Um, and Da Vinci, of all of them, uh, got to some kind of a subtle, transcendent point with, by taking it further and further and further. So like when other people would stop, it was like Da Vinci just started getting going. And you can, I think he, he did the same kind of thing of just keeping at it and getting more and more and more and more refined so that the whole thing becomes almost a transcendental image. And now, with his drawings or with his with both the paintings, painting if you look drawing. at the, the Da Vinci painting, it's just so, so alive and so subtle. Thank you, Bill. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Very good. Let me just get back. Thanks a lot. See, I had got a haircut since my last. I know you uh, look quite glamorous since today. My last, uh, I looked a little scruffy in my, in my interview. <laughs> <laughs>